say welcome to the house of Jacob this evening where we will be keeping the Lord's Passover. I call it the Lord's Passover. In fact, that is the title of the lesson because that is what the Bible calls it, the Lord's Passover. You hear a lot of times when people talk about the Passover, they refer to it as the Jews' Passover or the Jewish Passover. But it is not. The Lord said that it is the Lord's Passover. So that's what we'll be doing this evening, is observing the Lord's Passover. The Lord, when he brought Israel out of Egypt, he set up certain high days, or as they are sometimes referred to in the Bible as feast days. There is a weekly high day, and that is the Lord's Sabbath day, which is the seventh day. And then the Lord has annual high days. And we keep them all here. The weekly Sabbath day, the high days or the feast days is God referred to them. We keep them all. And we are keeping the first annual high day this evening. The Lord's Pass. So we're going to show you that uh, uh, in the scriptures. And not only are we going to show you that it is the Lord's Passover, but we're going to show you as well the meaning of the Passover and why you are supposed to keep it. We're going to begin in Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. In this 23rd chapter of Leviticus, you find all of them listed. All of God's feast days or high days, you find them listed here in this 23rd chapter of Leviticus. But, you know, I understand you have some people that has issue with the Old Testament. They say, I'm Christian, so I really don't follow the teaching of the Old Testament. All of the people that were called Christians in the Bible, they kept these high days. If you read in the New Testament, you will find that the apostles kept them. You will find that Jesus kept them. You will find, in fact, that the Bible says in the New Testament, Christ our Passover because people have been misled to believe that the Passover was only for the Jews. But we're going to show you this evening, it is for everybody that will serve the true and living God. Because whatever God gave to the Jews or to the Israelites, it was for everybody that would serve God. Now we're going to begin here in Leviticus chapter 23. 
And I'm going to show you, um, uh, first of all, that this is the Lord's Passover. I want you to understand that. So you don't leave out of here saying or believing that this is the Jews' Passover. I'm going to allow the Lord himself to tell you who the Passover this is. Began reading, brother, at Leviticus 23. And began at verse 1. 23 and 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Read. Concerning the feast of the Lord. Now it said, The Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord. What you will read here, we ain't going to bother reading it all, but what you will read here in this 23rd chapter of Leviticus is about the feast of the Lord. God said, even these are his feasts. And the first annual one is the Passover. But the Lord said, even these our mouthpiece, read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Uh-huh. Even these are my feasts. Now he say you proclaim them to be holy convocations. Holy convocation, that means you are supposed to have a gathering at every one of these feasts that the Lord has listed here. So again, the Lord says, Speak, Moses, speak unto the children of Israel concerning the feast of the Lord even these are my feasts, said the Lord. Read. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of, the, of rest. Read. And holy convocation, ye uh -huh. shall do no work therein. Read. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. And look at what the Lord said. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. So God said that the seventh day is his Sabbath day. You know, people put up a little argument about it sometimes because they have been led to believe that the first day of the week is the Sabbath day. But God says it is the seventh day. Yes, sir. Read some more. Verse 4. Uh-huh. These are the feasts of the Lord. Now again it says it. These are the feasts of the Lord. Read. Even holy convocation, Read. which ye shall proclaim in their season. Now, Lord, I said proclaim them in their season. That means that there's a set time that you are supposed to do them. And the Lord told you when that time is. Read. In the 14th day of the first month at uh, even is the Lord's Passover. And look at what the Lord called 14th day of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. Passover. According to God's calendar, the lunar calendar, this is the 14th day of the first month. We're not going to get into a long drawn out thing about that, but we can prove that. But anyway, Lord said the 14th day, first month. Is the Lord's Passover. That's what God says. Read, brother. And on the 15th day of uh -huh. the same month. Now, the very next day, tomorrow at sundown. Read. Is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Uh-huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Read. And the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Uh-huh. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Now, we'll be doing that tomorrow at sundown. But I just wanted to read a little bit of this. Read. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days in the, in the seventh day is in holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. So now, the Passover, it is not a Sabbath day, but the first day of the week, uh, first day of the Feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, it is a Sabbath day. And the seventh day 
of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it is a Sabbath day as well. So you're not supposed to do any servile work on either one of those. But on the Passover, you can work. It's not a Sabbath day, but it is a holy day. It is a feast day. Now, you got the Passover, 14th day of the first month. Following the Passover is the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. We're going to deal with that in its season. But now I just wanted to read just a little bit of that. Now, let's go to uh, when the Passover was instituted. We're going to start in Exodus chapter 11. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Now, when the Lord instituted this Passover, the Israelites was in bondage to the Egyptians. And the Lord had said he was going to pour out ten plagues up on the Egyptians. And when he poured out that tenth plague, then the Egyptians would let the Israelites go. So now he had poured out nine. Then the Lord says, here in this 10th chapter, uh, 11th chapter rather, uh, that he would uh, pour out this 10th and final plague and then the Egyptians would let the Israelites go. Read 11 and 1. Go ahead and read Exodus 11. Pick it up at verse 1. Read, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh uh -huh. and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence. Uh -huh. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Now the Lord had already poured out nine plagues upon the Egyptians. The Lord said, I'm going to pour out one other plague on them. And after I pour out this one, then they will let Israel go. Go ahead and read. Speak now in the ears of the people, uh -huh. and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Keep, keep reading, yes. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Uh -huh. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Read. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. Now, uh, Moses said, thus said the Lord, about midnight I'm going to go out in the midst of Egypt. Keep reading. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his, his throne, uh -huh. even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. Go ahead and read. There shall be a great and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, uh -huh. such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it anymore. Go ahead and read, brother. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue, against man or beast, that ye may know how, the, how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So now the Lord told Moses, I'm going to go out in the midst of Egypt. And all of the firstborn will die. Now, let's go to chapter 12. This is when the Passover was instituted. And this is what the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Egypt. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Uh-huh. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Now, this is the beginning of the year according to God's calendar. See, God's calendar does not begin in the middle of the winter. No, sir. You know, what we call January, you know, that's the, that's, that's the first month of the year with man's calendar, Gregorian calendar. But with God's calendar, it starts around this time, first month of the year. Read. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Read. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month uh -huh. they shall take to them every man a lamb. Now he said in the tenth day of this first month, 
Take every man a lamb. Read, brother. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbors next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Uh-huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Go ahead, me. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Now I'm going to put some stuff on the board here. Uh, and we're going to come back to it a little bit later. So now, Lord said take a lamb first year without blemish. Go ahead and read, brother. A male of the first year. Uh -huh. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Uh -huh. He shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Now, he said keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Well, what is the 14th day of the first month? It is the Lord's Passover. Yes, Didn't sir. we read that? Yes, sir. So now you got to put the lamb up on the 10th day. Then on the 14th day of the same month, you got to kill it. Yes, sir. Read. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And kill it in the evening. Read. And they shall take of the blood and sprinkle it upon the two side and posts. And then you had to take of the blood of the, all this stuff is significant. We're going to get back to it. We're going to help you understand really what this Passover is really all about. You need to understand what it's about. If God set up days and said that you are supposed to keep them, then you need to understand what they are about. We only yes, dealing sir. with one tonight, and that's the Passover. But we deal with every one of them in its seasons. Read. Middle of seven. Read. And on the upper doorposts of the houses. Yeah, take that blood and put it on the upper doorposts of your house. Read. Wherein they shall eat it. And then you had to eat. That Passover, this Passover, by the way, is a lamb. He said, you know, and then you had to eat it. And you're going to find out you had to eat it that same night in which you would kill it. Go ahead and read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, uh -huh. roast with fire. Now you say you eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire. Go ahead and read. And unleavened bread. And unleavened bread, it said, because... You can eat unleavened bread on the Passover day. But when you do the Passover, you have to do that with unleavened bread. So you can eat leavened bread on the Passover, but not with the Passover. That's right. You have to eat it with unleavened bread. Yes, sir. Read. And with bitter herbs they shall, they shall eat. Read. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, uh -huh. but roast with fire. Read. His head with his legs, and with the pertness thereof. Read it. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, uh -huh. and that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Read. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, uh -huh. and ye shall eat it in haste. Read. It is the Lord's Passover. What is that lamb called? That Lord's lamb Passover. without blemish. It is called the Lord's Passover. Keep reading, brother. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Now, Lord, I'm going to pass through the land of Egypt this night. Go on the 14th day of the first month. At the evening, yes, the Passover day, read. And we'll smite all the firstborns in the land of Egypt. And the Lord said, I will smite all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Read it. Both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Keep reading. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the now, house. Now, Lord said, that blood. Then I told you to put over the doorpost of your house. Yes, sir. He said, that blood will be a token right. over your house. When I pass through the land of Egypt, read. Upon the houses where ye are, read. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon That's you. That's where to the term Passover came yes, from. Yes, sir. He said, when I see the, he said, I'm going to kill all the firstborn. Anybody that's not under the blood of this Passover, I'm going to kill all of the firstborn in that house. But when I see 
the blood yes, sir. of the Passover. Then I will pass over that house. What verse are we, brother? End of 13. Read it. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land now, of Egypt. Now, what is the plague? The plague is death. So if I see the blood, then I pass over that. I will pass over that house. Yes, sir. And that plague of death will not be up on you. But only if I see the blood of the Passover. If I don't see the blood of that Passover over your house in the first morning, that house is going to die. That's right. What verse have it? Tell 14. me. 14. Read it. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh-huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You know what throughout your generations mean? As long as there's a generation, then you are supposed to do it. Don't yes, tell sir. me nothing about where you know Jesus died and I ain't got to do all that stuff. No, sir. You're going to find out something about when Jesus died, too, before we leave out of here. And we're going to find out something else about Jesus, too, that he was really the real Passover. Yes, sir. And that lamb and all them lambs they killed up until Jesus died, they were all pointing to Jesus, every one of them. Read it. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. For how long? Forever. Forever. So now here we are many generations later. Yes, sir. And we still doing it. That's right. Why are we still doing it? Because God said forever in every generation. Yes, do sir. It. So that's why we doing it. Skip down now to uh, 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 verse uh, 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 21. Go ahead. Then Moses called for the elders of uh, Israel read. and said unto them, uh -huh. Draw and take your lamb according to your families uh -huh. and kill the Passover. Now then Moses called to the people and said, Draw and take your lamb uh, and, uh, and, and, and kill it according to the Passover. Read. He shall take a bunch of hyssop uh -huh. and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. Uh -huh. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Go ahead and read, brother. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Uh -huh. And when he see up the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, mm -hmm. the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to now smite you. Now we see you. the blood. So it's the blood that's going to redeem yes, you. Yes, sir. I'm an Israelite, that don't matter. I'm a Gentile, that don't matter. All I'm looking for is the blood yes, of the past. Ain't nothing that's going to save you. But the blood of the past. So nothing else. See, I, I'm a, you know, because Israelite got a bad. Oh, see, I'm an Israelite. See? You don't come under the blood of that past, so you're going to be a dead Israelite. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Keep reading, brother. 24. Uh-huh. And, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, uh -huh. according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep it, keep this service. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you. Then it come to pass if your children say unto you. Read. What mean ye by this service? What mean you by this service? What you going to tell them? Read. That ye shall say, uh -huh. it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Read. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. Uh -huh. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. Now, when the Passover was instituted, that's what it was about. And it was supposed to be kept that way until Jesus came and died. But we're going to find out after Jesus died, then the ordinance of the Passover would change. Because there would come a time when you would no longer be killing animals. Let's go and read a little something here. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 35. Because they kept it. 
Lord said forever. He meant forever. Yes, sir. But we're going to find out a little later what would happen once Jesus died. Second Chronicles 35, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. But this is how it was kept until Jesus died. Start at uh, Second Chronicles, brother. Pick it up at verse 30, chapter 35, read verse 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, Josiah kept the Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem. Now, uh, Josiah, he's one of the kings of Israel. And he said he kept the Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read. And they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. You see how they were doing it? They killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Skip down to verse uh, 13. Read. And they roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance. Well, that wasn't what the law said. Ain't that what Moses said? Yes, sir. You know, you, you, you roast it with fire, with his head and his pertness, all yes, of that, that. So they did the same way. We're going to find out they did it that way until Jesus died. Did we finish that 13th verse? No, sir. Finish it. But the other holy offerings saw they in pots and in cauldrons, and in pans, and divided them speedily among all the people. Skip down to verse 17 now, brother. We ain't concerned about all this stuff. I just want you to understand that they did it that way, even the manner in which the Lord commanded Moses to say to the people. Verse 17, read. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time uh -huh. and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. Well, what follows the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened yes, Bread? Sir. How many days? Seven. They did the thing according to what God had commanded Moses to say to the people. Roasted it with fire on the 14th day of the first month. Yes, sir. Then following that, they kept the unleavened bread for seven days. Skip down now, brother, to uh, verse 17. Read. That's what I just read. Oh, you brother. just read? Yes, sir. Okay. Did we read verse 18? No. Read. And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Uh -huh. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. Uh -huh. And the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Now, let's go to uh, Israel. We're going bondage for 70 years. And I'm going to show you what they did when they came out of that bondage. Let's go to Ezra, chapter 6. Pick it up at verse 19. Ezra 6, and we began reading at verse 19. 6 and 19. Okay, brother, when you get it, I want you to go ahead and read it. 6 and 19. Okay, read and the children of the captivity kept the Passover. Uh, uh, now, uh, this is after Israel came back out of captivity. It said the children uh, kept the Passover. Go ahead and read. Upon the 14th day of the first month. Upon what day? Upon the 14th day of the, the first month. God first said day. forever. He meant forever. That's right. We even go and show you. Even when the Lord returned, still going to have to keep the past. Well, Lord said forever, he meant forever. Read it. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. Uh -huh. All of them were pure and Re killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity. And what did they do? Killed the Passover for all of the children of the captivity. What verse out? End of 20. Read it. And for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of captivity, mm -hmm. and all the such as had separated themselves unto, unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land, 
to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. Read it. And kept the feast of unleavened bread seven now they days. they kept the Passover. Then they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days. Read some more. With joy. Uh -huh. For the Lord had made them joyful uh -huh. and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Now, let's go into the uh, New Testament. We're going into Luke chapter 2. So they kept it. You know, they kept it just like the Lord had said do it. You know, kill the lamb on the 14th day, roast him with fire. Yes, sir. Eat him with unleavened bread and all of that stuff. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you got into the New Testament, until Jesus died, they were still doing it the same way. Yes, sir. Ordinance of the Passover was going to change. But not until Jesus died. Up until he died, they still kept the Passover the same way. Start reading at Luke chapter 2. And began reading at uh, verse 11. Luke 2, pick it up at 11. This is uh, Jesus' birth here. And when he was born, we're going to find out that his parents kept the Passover and they took him with them to keep the Passover, yes, even when he was a kid. Yes, sir. Start at uh, Luke chapter 2. Read verse 11, brother. Read. For unto you is born this day in the city of David uh -huh. a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, you know, we're going to find out. You know, they were still doing the animal thing when Jesus was born. And they would do it until he died. Skip down now, brother, to uh, 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 verse 21. Read. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child. You know, when eight... The Lord said, when a son is born, they were to be circumcised on the eighth yes, day. Sir. Well, Jesus' parents had him circumcised yes, on the Because that, that law was good. Yes, sir. Read. His name was called Jesus, uh -huh. which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Go ahead and read. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. Because you had a law that the Lord gave to Moses and told Moses to give it unto the people. You know, after a woman had a man child, she had to go through purification yes, for sir. so long. Yes, sir. And after she had a girl child, she had to go through purification yes, sir. for so long. That's what this is talking about. Read. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Uh huh. As it is written in the law of the Lord, uh -huh. every male that openeth the wound shall be called holy to the Lord. Read, brother. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in See, the I law of the they Lord. Did. They offered a sacrifice according to that that was said. So they were still doing the the, the animal sacrifice yes, thing, yes, that's my point. Because that wouldn't go away until Jesus died. This, you're reading about his birth right here. But until he died, the animal sacrifice law was still yes, good. Yes, sir. And they were doing it. And they were even doing the Passover according to the way that the Lord had given it unto Moses. Skip down to uh, verse, well, finish that, that 24 verse. Go ahead. And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, uh -huh. a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And now, let's skip down to uh, verse 41, brother. Read it. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast uh, of the with Passover. Jesus, that's what we're dealing with. You know, even as a little kid, and look at what his parents did. Because you had to keep it. They understood that. Yes, sir. You know, Jesus wasn't nothing but a child. And maybe after he reached a certain age, I'm sure they had explained all yes, that sir. to him. 
Read that 41 again. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And they went up to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Can you read? And when he was 12 years old, uh -huh. they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. After the custom of the feast, because there were certain things you were supposed to do yes, sir. on this Passover day. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at... Uh, Verse 13. Because there was a certain thing you were supposed to do. But we're going to find out that those things, especially when it came to killing animals, they were merely types yes, sir. of the real thing. Because them pass over lamb that they killed. They were merely a shadow of the real Passover lamb. You know who the real Passover lamb is? Jesus. If you don't know, hang around a while. You will before you get out of here. Because we're going to read it to you right from the Bible. Maybe you believe the Bible and maybe you don't. But we're going to read it yes, to sir. you anyway and let you decide whether or not you believe the Bible. People say, you know, I believe in the Lord, do you? You believe what the Lord saying in his word? You believe that? Start at, uh, at Colossians chapter 2 and begin reading at uh, verse 13. Read it. And you, being dead in your sins uh -huh. and the uncircumcision of your flesh, Read. hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, uh -huh. blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. You know what the handwriting of ordinances that were against us? You know what that is? That is the animal sacrifice. Yes, it was sir. against you. You know why it's against you? Because the blood of the bulls and goats yes, could not get it done. That's, That's right. written in your Bible. In fact, Paul said it. You Maybe, I, I throw that out there, maybe you... You'll believe that because everybody claim that they believe what Paul said. Yeah, they do. Until you show them what Paul really said and then you find out they don't believe that. That's right. Start top of that verse again. Read it. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That ain't Ten Commandments. That ain't the high days. Ten Commandments were not against you. You need them, according to Jesus, you need them to get eternal life. Yes, sir. So they're not against you. But them animal sacrifice laws, they were against you. Right. Well, why did God give them to you? As a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Read some more. Which was contrary to us uh -huh. and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You know, that's the law Jesus nailed to the cross was the animal sacrifice. That's right. Law. He didn't nail the ten to the cross. He didn't nail the high days to the cross. The only thing, we're going to read that in fact a little bit later. The only law that he nailed to the cross were the animal sacrifices law. That's the law that he took out of the way and nailed to the cross. What verse out there, brother? 15. Read some more. And having spoiled, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. and having spoiled principalities and powers, uh -huh. he made a show of them openly, read. triumphing over them in it. I hope everybody understands we're reading about the animal sacrifice right. law. I hope you understand Yes, that. sir. If, if you don't understand it, from what we are reading now, maybe you will understand when we show you what the angel Gabriel told Daniel. Read. 16. Read it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat 
uh -huh. or in drink, Green. or in respect of an holy day, uh -huh. or for or of the new moon, Boy. or of the Sabbath days, Boy, which are a shadow of things to come. You know, they were merely shadows of type yes, sir. of the things. They were a type. That's right. the, 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 the lamb without blemish that died on the Passover day, it was a type of the real lamb who is Jesus, the real Passover, who is Jesus? Yes, sir. That would be a lamb without blemish and would die on the Passover day. We're going to read it. I ain't going to let you get out of here. Block the door. <laughs> <laughs> you going to hear some bad before you leave out of here. Yes, sir. Where are we? End of 17. Read. But the body is of Christ. Uh-huh. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility. Now, don't let nobody beguile you of your reward either. So now, them lambs that they killed, they were shadows of the real thing. But the body is of Christ. Yes, That's the real thing. Start now at Daniel 9, and we began reading at verse 26. We're going to pick it up at verse 26. This, what we are about to read here, is about the death of Jesus. That's what you are reading about, you know, Jesus is the Messiah. And you are about to read when he would be cut off. You know, when he was cut off, we're going to read that too. He would be cut off on the Passover day. But now, Daniel 9, picking up at verse 26. Go ahead and read, brother. And after three score and two, day, two weeks uh -huh. shall Messiah be cut off. Well, Jesus is the Messiah. That's what you're reading about. You know what? what you know what? And when was he cut? Cut off mean to be killed. You know when he was killed? He was killed on the Passover day. I'm going to let the book tell you that. Stick around. Read. But not for himself. And he didn't die for himself either. Who did he die for? He died for the sins of man. Read. And the people of the prince that shall come uh -huh. shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Now, we're not concerned with that today. But we are concerned with this. Read it, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh -huh. In the midst of the week. It's in the midst. You know, Jesus did down the good Friday. That's another fable you've been giving. Boy, you've been talking so many fables. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you have gone with every one of them. Step down. Oh, you know, Jesus died on good Friday. Read that to me. Well, uh, you see. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I see you've been lied to. That's what I see. Yes, sir. The angel told Daniel that in the middle of the week, that's what mist is, in the midst of the week, he would do what? He would it just told him he's going to be cut off, but not for himself. And then when he'd be cut off, then look at what it says here. Read. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblations to cease. He shall cause the high days to cease. No, sir. Not that. No. Well, the Ten Commandments to see. No, sir. It didn't say that. No, either. sir. Man. He said, cause what to see, then? Sacrifices and oblations. Sacrifices and oblations. That is the law that he nailed to the cross. That's what the angel that God sent to tell Daniel. Yes, sir. Daniel didn't make that up. The angel told him that he would call 
sacrifices, and oblation to see. Well, that brings up another point. You got to do the Passover, Baba. Yes, sir. But, but you ain't killing no more animals. Because when Jesus died, that the end of the animal thing. That's right. So now, how you going to do the Passover? Lord say you got to do it forever. Show you how you going to do it. Start at uh, Matthew chapter 26. And we began reading at verse 1. Matthew 26. And we're going to pick it up. At verse 1. Read. And it came to pass mm -hmm. when Jesus had finished all these sayings. You know, Jesus said a certain thing. Then after he had finished all of those sayings, he said to his disciples, read. He said unto his disciples, uh -huh. you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Now Jesus said, you know after two days come the feast of the Passover. And look at what's going to happen to me. Read. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. On the <clears throat> Passover day, he would die on the Passover day. That's what he said. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We began reading at verse 7. And I'm going to show, because the Passover lamb had to die when? On the Passover. Didn't we read that? Yes, sir. You had to kill him on the Passover day. Yes, if sir. he's the Passover lamb, he had to die on the Passover day. Because you're going to find out Jesus became our Passover. Them shadows, when Jesus died, them shadows, that ends. Now, you're going to deal with the real Passover. This is the real Passover. First thing, you had down the Passover day. Let's go now to, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 5, and began reading, brother, at verse 7. 5 and 7. Read that. Purge out therefore the old leaven, read. that ye may be a new lump, uh -huh. as ye are unleavened. Uh -huh. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. If he's the Passover, doesn't that mean he had down Passover yes, day? Yes, sir. That was part of the ordinance of the Passover. You got to kill it on the Passover. Not any time uh, of the week or, uh, uh, or the month or of the year. On the Passover yes, day, he had to die. Yes, sir. If he the Passover, that's why he died on the Passover day. Because you're going to find out. How you keep the Passover now. Because you can't do the animal thing no more. Mm -hmm. Although you got some to try. Yeah, do it. Go down to the local supermarket and buy some lamb. They don't know if it's of the first year or the 20th year. Male or female. They don't know if it's male. Thank you. Male or female. They don't know if it's got no Any blemish or 100 blemishes. That's right. Because it had to be without blemish, right. a male of the first year. Right. That stuff is over. Go, go to Jewel and buy all the lamb you want. <laughs> Don't mean nothing. Let's go to uh, John, the Gospel of John. Chapter 1. 
pick it up at uh, verse 29. John 1, verse 29. Okay. Go ahead and read. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him uh -huh. and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now, this is the real lamb here. Yes, sir. You know, we, ain't, we ain't doing the four-legged lambs no more. Now we are dealing with the real lamb, the real Passover lamb. Skip down now, verse 36, and read. And uh, looking upon... 35, I'm sorry, 35. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, uh -huh. and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, uh -huh. Behold, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. That's the real lamb. You're going to find out he is the past. Well, you just read he was the past. Then we read, we read, yes. we read that there yes, in Corinthians. Yes, sir. I hope y'all remember reading it. That's why I tell you, look at your Bible. So you'll understand we ain't making this stuff up. They, they made it up when they told you he died on good practice. That's That, yes, that they made up. Somebody made that up for you. Yes, sir. We read that he died in the middle of the week. That, that, that's what your Bible said. Figure out who you going to believe, the pastor of the Bible. Figure, figure that out. You need to figure that out. Let's go to... Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. He wasn't just any lamb. He was the Passover lamb. Even the lamb that is without blemish. That redeemed. Well, the Passover lamb. Didn't the book say he had to be a lamb without blemish? Yes, sir. And that by his blood, he would redeem the people? Yes, sir. Well, put this little scribble scratch on, on the board in case you got a short memory. First Peter 1 began reading at... Uh, Verse 18. 1 Peter 1 began verse 18. Read it. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Listen, people. You are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. I don't care how much of you got. You can't buy your way out of the fire. No, sir. You can't buy salvation because no, everybody's headed to the fire. The wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. And the book said that all have sinned. Silver and gold can't redeem you from that. This is the only thing that can redeem you. Read it. From your vain conversations from received. From your vain lifestyle that you receive from the tradition of your father. Yes, sir. And yeah, they told you about it. I know they told you because they told me. <laughs> you know, you got to go do Easter, son. Don't forget Christmas. And make sure you go to church every Sunday. You weren't redeemed from that vain lifestyle. Yes, sir. What redeemed you? Read. But with the precious blood of Christ. But with the precious blood of Christ. Read. As of a lamb without blemish and As without spot. As of a lamb 
without blemish and without... Well, you read he was your Passover. Now you find out he is the lamb that is without blemish and without spot. Everything lines up. What God said concerning the Passover lamb when it was instituted. It all runs in parallel with what happened with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He is our Passover. Because you ain't got no four-legged Passover no more. He is a lamb without blemish and without spot. And you got to eat him on the Passover day. We're going to show you how you do that, too. Go and read some. Go to Isaiah 53. Pick it up at verse 5. This is what the Lord had Isaiah the right about the death of Jesus. Isaiah 53 began reading at verse 1. 53 and 1. Read it. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquity. Well, you should know by now who this is. That was wounded for our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquity. Read. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Read it. And with his stripes we are healed. Key read. All we like sheep have gone astray. Uh -huh. We have turned every one to his own way. Read. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Key read. He was oppressed. And was afflicted, uh -huh. yet he opened not his mouth. Now this had to do with his crucifixion. That's what you're reading about. The death of Jesus. And what day did he die on? On the Passover yes, day. Sir. That's what you're reading about. Read some more of it then. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Wait a minute, he is brought as what? A lamb to a the slaughter. A lamb to the slaughter. Yes, well, when was he brought as a lamb to the slaughter? You know when that was? Well, you're reading about his crucifixion. And you know that he died on the Passover day. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter on the Passover day, brother. Read it. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, uh -huh. so he openeth not his mouth. Read. He was taken from prison and from judgment. You know, they had a little trumped up trial. Try to make it all look l legit. You know, they found a couple of lies. Come on up here and tell mm -hmm. your lie. Oh, we don't think that one's going to fly. I'll tell you what, you come on up here and tell yours. And maybe that one will fly. This is all written in the crucifixion yes, story sir. I'm telling you about here. We ain't going to bother reading it all tonight. Read some more. Middle of eight. Read it. And who shall declare his generation? Uh -huh. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Read. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. You know, the angel told Daniel that Jesus would be cut off, but not for himself. But he had Isaiah to write that Jesus would be cut off for the transgression of the people. What verse up? Verse 9. Read it. And he made his grave with the wicked uh -huh. and with the rich in his death. Read, brother. Because he had done no violence, uh -huh. neither was any deceit in his Re mouth. Read some more. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh -huh. He hath put him to grief. Read. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Now, that is good. We're going to leave that right there. Now, let's go to uh, back up to Isaiah 52. And we're going to read two verses, verses 13 and 14. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Because you see, they, they didn't just kill him. Oh, no. You know, he go, shook, 
cut your head off over with. Uh uh. Punish. They beat him and they beat him and they beat him some more. So much so that the Lord had the prophet Isaiah to write this. You see, he didn't just die. He suffered and died. He took a, he took a beating, people. Look at what the Lord had Isaiah to write concerning him. Read 52, 13. Read. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. Now, we know who the servant is. He will deal prudently. Read. He shall be exalted uh -huh. and extolled and be very high. He's going to be exalted and extolled and be very high. Read some more. As many were astonished at thee. As many was astonished at him. Go ahead and read. His visage was so marred. His visage. That means his appearance was so marred. Read. More than any man. More than any man. Brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Oh, they slaughtered him. That's why Isaiah wrote here, visits was marred more than any man. Read. And his form more than the sons of men. And his form more than the sons. It was a slaughter. That's what it was. It wasn't pretty at all. Oh, they took turns beating on him. You know, suffered and died. For our sin. Ain't that yes, sir. God so boy, that's got to be some love there. Yes, sir. You send your only begotten son to suffer like that and die for somebody Sense. else? Yes, sir. He's a good boy. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's love there. Yes, sir. No greater. Let's go now to, uh, we're going to go read a little bit about slaughter. Let's go first to uh, Deuteronomy. Because the slaughter took place on the Passover. Let's go to Deuteronomy, because we're going to read Deuteronomy 16, read verses 5 and 6. Because we're going to read a little bit about the Passover here. In a minute. First, well, we, let, well, let's read this. Deuteronomy 16, brother. And began reading at verse 5, 16 and 5. Read. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates. Read. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Read. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, uh -huh. there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, uh -huh. at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. At the evening and the going down of the sun. That's when it's supposed to be kept. In the evening, at the going down of the sun. And that's what they did. Go to Matthew 26. Again, read at verse 1. Twenty-six and one. Read. And it came to pass uh -huh. when Jesus had finished all these sayings. Read. He said unto his disciples. Uh-huh. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, uh -huh. and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Keep reading. Then assembled together the chief priests uh -huh. and the scribes and the elders of the people. Unto the, 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 the chief priests? Yes, sir. And the elders. Rulers. Yes, you mean sir. They, they, the, 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 the ministers yes, sir. had yes. a hand in him being put to death? Yes. They consulted together how they might kill him. Then when Pilate wanted to let him go, Pilate said, you know, it's a custom that we let one go. Yes, sir. On the feast day. 
I got this Barabbas here who is a criminal. Yes, sir. And I got Jesus. Which one shall I let go? He said, let Barabbas go. Well, what shall I do with Jesus? Kill him. Read some more, brother. End of three. Read it. Unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. Read, brother. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility uh -huh. and kill him. Might take him by subtility and kill him. Read some more. But they said, uh -huh. not on the feast day. What, not on the feast day? You know, the feast day, that's the day after the Passover. That's right. Not on the feast day, it said. Because the feast day is the Sabbath day. And they want to look pious. Uh, so we, we, we ain't going to do it on, on the feast day. Read, brother. Lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is really a Passover. It's going to make it clear. Read. The disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, uh -huh. Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Where wilt thou prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Because they eating the Passover. They was eating it like this. Yes, sir. Because Jesus had not died. You know, with the... The, the four-legged lamb and the, and the bitter herbs and, and all of that. They were still doing that. That would not change until Jesus died. Yes, sir. Read. And he said, go into the city to such a man uh -huh. and say unto him, go the ahead. master said, my time is at hand. Read. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Go ahead and read. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, uh -huh. and they made ready the Passover. And they made ready the Passover. Did all the stuff to prepare for them to eat the Passover. The way it was described back in the books of the law, back in Exodus. Read. Now when the evening was come. Now when the evening was come. Go ahead and read. He sat down with the twelve. Uh-huh. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 18. I'm trying to find my way out of here, you all. I don't want to keep you here all night. But you need to know about this. Yes, sir. But I want to show you uh, something in Luke chapter 18 that Jesus said about the slaughter, the lamb that would be slaughtered on the Passover day. Read Luke 18. Began at verse 31. Read, brother. Then he took unto him the twelve uh -huh. and said unto them, Read. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, uh -huh. and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Now Jesus took the twelve, and he said, Go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. And this is what he said they would do. Read. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles. So look at what he said. He's going to be delivered unto the Gentiles. And notice what Jesus says that they would do to him. Go ahead and read. And shall be mocked. And shall be mocked. Read. And spitefully entreated. And mocked and spitefully entreated. Read. And spit it upon. And spit it upon. Read. And they shall scourge him. You know what scourge is? Beat. And they shall scourge him. What else? And put him to death. And put him to death. Read. And on the third day, he shall rise again. And he was put in that grave. They, they did all this to him. That's what the Gentiles did. Then Israel, they turned around. They had their turn too. Yes, sir. That's why the book says his face was so marred more than the enemy. They ain't put a, a, a crown of thorns on him and hit him in the head. You think that wasn't no slaughter? Oh, 
okay. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. I'm going to show you a little mercy, not a lot, but a little. Luke chapter 22. Again, reading at verse 7. 22 and 7. Read. Then came the day of unleavened bread mm -hmm. when the Passover must be killed. So that's the Passover day because you didn't kill the Passover on the day of unleavened right. bread. You killed it on the Passover day. That's right. Read some more. And he sent Peter and John saying, uh -huh. go and prepare us to Passover Read. that we may eat. Read some more. And they said unto him, uh -huh. where wilt thou that we prepare? Go ahead, brother. And he said unto them, uh -huh. behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into, a, into the house where he entereth in. Well, we read that in another chapter. Let's skip. Let's skip down now to uh, verse, uh, 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 verse uh, let's see where I want to pick it up. Uh, verse 14, read. And when the hour was come, uh -huh. he and when the hour was come, you know when it was time for them to put him to death, when the hour was come, read. He sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Read. And he said unto them, uh -huh. with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. You know, people call it the Last Supper, but we're going to call it what the Bible calls it. Yes, sir. It. He said with desire. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Read some more. For I say unto you, uh -huh. I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read. Bro. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, uh -huh. Take this and read. divide it among yourselves. Uh -huh. For I say unto you, read. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Go ahead and, and read. he took bread and gave thanks and break it uh -huh. and gave it unto them. Read. Saying, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Now he say you do all. When did he do this? Every third Sunday? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Well, what about every first Sunday? No, sir. He did it one time on the Passover yes, day. Sir. That's when he did it. Now he said, eat this bread, drink this cup. This do in remembrance of me. Yes, sir. This is how you keep the past, old people. Don't do the four-legged animals no more. This is how you do the Passover. Because we're going to read what it is that he wants you to remember. What verse? 20. Read it. Likewise also the cup after uh -huh. supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, uh -huh. which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me. That is enough. So you got the cup with the wine that represents his blood. And you got the bread that represents his body. Yes, sir. And he said, when you do it, you do it in remembrance of him. When was it done? On the Passover day. That's what this Passover was ultimately pointing to. This. The real Passover night. Go to 1 Corinthians 11. Pick it up at verse 23. Because remember, the Passover is a memorial to keep you in remembrance of something. And what is it that he wants you to remember? to remember that he died on the Passover day. That's what he wants you to remember. It is a memorial unto his death. You don't do a, a memorial unto somebody's death 
on some day that they didn't down. You do a memorial unto their death on the day in which they died. Yes, sir. John Brown died today. We gonna do a memorial. What day did he? Uh, he well, he died on June the fifth. So we gonna do a memorial on June the fifth yes, to John Brown. Yes, sir. Jesus died on the Passover, so we gonna do a memorial unto his death on the day in which he died. Look at what Paul wrote here. Uh, to the Corinthians. Start reading, brother, at um, 1 Corinthians 11. Pick it up at verse 23. 11 and 23. Go ahead and read it. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. See what Paul said to the Corinthians, I received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you. Read. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Well, when was that? On the Passover. That, yes, that's sir. when that was, wasn't it? That's right. On the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. Read. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and uh -huh. said, Read. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Read it, brother. This do in remembrance of me. Now he said, this do in remembrance of me. Go ahead and read. After the same manner also he took the cup. Uh -huh. and he had supped, saying, Read. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Uh -huh. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. He said, this do ye, and as often as you do it, you do it and remember. Notice, he didn't say do it often, no, did he? Somebody somehow read that in there. So every third Sunday, we got to do it. Well, Jesus didn't do it no every third no, Sunday. Or every first Sunday. Or after somebody had just died. No, sir. Go, go, you know, go give them their last rite. Give them some bread and wine. Jesus did it. One time on the Passover day. And that's how often you are supposed to do it. Because it is a memorial to his death. Keep reading. Verse 26. Read it, brother. For as often as ye eat this bread uh -huh. and drink this cup, read. ye do show the Lord's death till he come. As often as you do it, you do show the Lord's death. Till he come. When did he die? On the Passover day. So it is a memorial unto his death. We got just a little bit more, you all. I mean that. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. And we began reading at verse 43. Exodus 12. Verse 43. So that's what this Passover is about. You know, the children of Israel, they were reminded of what the Lord did to the Egyptians on that Passover day. But this was what it was all ultimately pointing to. The day in which the real Passover lamb died for the sins of the world. So when you eat that bread, because we're going to serve you the bread and wine. When you eat it, just, just remember what you're eating to. Exodus 12, verse 43. Go ahead and read, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, uh -huh. This is the ordinance of the Passover. Read. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Now the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. Read. But every man serving that is bought for money, uh -huh. and thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. You know, every man serving, when you have circumcised him, then let him eat thereof. Read. A foreigner and hired servant shall not eat thereof. Uh -huh. And one house shall it be eaten. 
Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house. Read. Neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Go ahead and read. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. Uh-huh. And when a stranger shall sojourn now with thee. Now all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And then when a stranger sojourn, go ahead and read. And we'll keep the Passover to the Lord. And we'll keep the Passover to the Lord. Let him do what? Go ahead and read. Let all his males be circumcised. Let all his males be circumcised. Keep reading. And then let him come near and keep it. And And then let him come near and keep it. Read. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. Read. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. If you haven't been circumcised, you're really not supposed to eat of the Passover. Just wanted to read that. And that, whether you are Israel or a stranger, read that next verse. One law shall be to him that is home born uh-huh. and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. So I just wanted to read you that. So that you would understand, really, if you haven't been circumcised, you're really not supposed to eat there. I'm not going to ask you, have you been circumcised? Have you been circumcised? You know whether or not That's you've right. been circumcised. It ain't my concern. That's between you and God. That's right. I just wanted to read you what God said. We're going to read one other thing, and then we're going to go ahead on and serve you the Passover. Let's go to Numbers chapter 9. Because he's supposed to keep the Passover. And you're supposed to keep all God's feast days. We're just dealing with this one tonight because this is the one that's in season. Numbers 9. And we began reading at uh, verse 1. Because Passover is supposed to be kept on the 14th day of the uh, uh, first month. But now, Lord had it set so that if... You were on a journey, or you were unclean by the reason of a dead body. Yes, sir. Then you could keep it on the 14th day of the second month. But we're going to read, if that was not the case, then you have to keep the Passover, or you would be cut off. Oh, it ain't playing about this stuff, people. Numbers 9. Began reading at verse 1, 9 and 1. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai Uh in the first month of the second year after they were were come out of the land of Egypt. That's the month in which you uh, keep the Passover. Go ahead and read. Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. Uh Uh-huh, 14th day of the first month. That's the appointed season. Read. In the 14th day of of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, uh-huh. according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall ye keep it. Read. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, uh-huh. that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. Read. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. Keep reading. There were certain men uh-huh. who were defiled by the dead body of a man. Now, there were certain men that had been defiled by the dead body of a man. Go ahead and read. That they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they could not keep the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Read. And they came before Moses uh-huh. and before Aaron on that day. Uh-huh. And those men said unto him, Read. We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Uh-huh. Wherefore, are we, wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? Read. And Moses said unto them, uh-huh. Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And then Moses said unto them, Just hold still, and I'm going to see what the Lord command concerning you. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying... And then the Lord spake unto Moses and said, read... Speak unto the children of Israel, saying... Uh-huh. 
If any man of you, of you or of your posterity, in other words, you see, go ahead and read. Shall be unclean by reason of a dead body. Shall be unclean by reason of a dead body. Read it. Or be in a journey afar off. Or be in a journey afar off. Read, brother. Yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Uh huh. The fourteenth day of the second month. The fourteenth. You know, we're going to have this service too in this season about a month from now. Yes, sir. We'll have what we refer to as the second Passover. And that is for anybody that were unclean by reason of a dead body on the 14th day of the first month. Or that was in a journey on the 14th day of the first month. Read. The 14th day of the second month at even, they shall keep it. Now, we're going to announce when the 14th day of the second month is here, roughly a month from now. Read. And eat it with unleavened bread uh -huh. and bitter herbs. Read. They shall leave none of it until the morning, uh -huh. nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. Read, brother. But the man that is clean. But the man that is clean on the 14th day of the first month. Yes, sir. The man that is clean. Go ahead and read. And is not in a journey. And is not in a journey. Read. And forbear it to keep the Passover. But yet he forbid to keep the Passover. Look at what the Lord says regarding him. Read. Even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. See what the Lord say, Eve. You know, he ain't in no journey. Ain't unclean by reason of a dead body. But yet he just, for whatever reason, decide, I ain't keeping no Passover. Look at what the Lord said regarding him. Read that again. But the man that is clean uh -huh. and is not in a journey Read. and forbeareth to keep the Passover, uh -huh. even the same soul shall be cut off from uh -huh. among his people. He said, Lord, say, even that same soul shall be cut off from among his people. Read. Because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. Read. That man shall bear his sin. That man, Lord, said, going to bear his sin whether he is real or whether he's stranger. Read that next verse. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you uh -huh. and will keep the Passover unto the Lord uh -huh. according to the ordinance of the Passover Read. and according to the manner thereof, uh -huh. so shall he do. Uh -huh. You shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. This Passover thing, it applies to everybody. Yes, sir. Whether you are the stranger or whether you Israel. So now hopefully you have learned and have understood what this Passover is really about. Ultimately it was pointing to when Jesus would die for the sins of man on the Passover day. Thank you. And now we're going to uh, serve you.
Follow it to a T. Yeah. To re- 